All right, from last week's um, Torah portion. Uh, if you if you have uh, studied your Torah portion, as is there someone that would like to share a little bit this morning? Come. Shabbat shalom. This, um, this Torah portion is amazing for me because um, I'm learning. Uh, um, I've had things happen to me in my life also where I've seen visions and um, I've been in the spirit and I've seen things in the spirit. And one of the first things that happened to me was I was sleeping and a voice came. I was reading the Torah and a voice came and said, tell them the kingdom of heaven is upon you. And I woke up and I was like, oh my goodness, do I tell them? So then now, now confusion comes in and it says, I said, do I tell them the kingdom of heaven is upon me? Or do I tell them the kingdom of heaven is upon them? You know, but, but all of this that happened to Jacob, I'm learning that today um, that it's about the restoration to the world that what Adam lost, we are taking back, which is dominion over this earth. So what Jacob saw in Jacob's ladder was where Rabbi talks about um, uh, the supernatural dimension comes to meet the human. And that's exactly what happens to us when we're walking in Torah. So this, this, this portion spoke to me so much because it also talked about um, two camps, and that's exactly where it is, where we where we are given authority, like Rabbi says, you know, that our words, our words have power. And it says in Scripture, I was looking up the Scripture, but it says in Scripture that the kingdom of heaven is not words. The kingdom of heaven is power. Those words are power. So a lot of people believe that the kingdom of heaven is some place that we're going to leave, that we're going to go. But I'm learning that every time I say the Our Father, because we say the Our Father at 9, 12, and 3, I'm learning that every time we say the Our Father, we're praying to have his kingdom here on earth. And then, and then we are his government. We is, he is establishing his government, which is the restoration of the house of David. And I just get, I just get, uh, um, I just get so, uh, wow, you know, and, and it also says, you know, um, Father, who am I? And it's like, it's nothing that I've done. It's his love that, that, that he showed through Yeshua and that, that I'm learning that I was there in the beginning. You know, I mean, that's even amazing for me too. And then he says, then he says that this week's Torah portion begins with Jacob's fleeing from Canaan and ends with his return 20 years later. He was finally prepared for a critical meeting in which he will be brought face to face with both himself and his God and commissioned him with a new name into the call of his destiny. I am here to tell you if I told you my story, it would take a long time. You wouldn't believe where I come from. I come from addiction. I come from the darkest places in this world and God has pulled me out of those places and um, I was face to face. I struggled also my to do my own will and and here I am because it's God's will and he gave me a new name I was baptized um, Hebrew and I've been given a new name and I'm I'm I'm, I'm praying and, and and learning to walk in my new name and I just want to share my name real quick with you because it says here that he gave Jacob a new name which is a call into his destiny and my name is Batami and my name means daughter of many nations look at the flags all around me God has planted me right where I am daughter of my people he says my, my, my name, Bet, means house of Yahweh. Yahweh resides in me. I, I, I walk. Bet, house, Tav, is I'm branded as his ambassador. Ayin, I have the right light. Uh, I'm walking in Torah. I'm not celebrating Christmas. I don't have a Christmas tree. Um, mem, I have two mems in my name, which is wisdom and living water, gushing rivers of living water. And I have an upper yud. I have a yud in my name, and I walk. I strive to walk in the upper yud, which is the learning mystery systems of Yahweh. That, I mean, I told my friends, um, Mary and, and Linda and I, we study all the time, and I told her, I can't wait until we get to read the Torah portion because this is so powerful for me. Thank you, Rabbi. Awesome. Anyone else would like to try and share uh, from last week's Torah? Uh, yeah, Torah portion from last week. Okay, come. Yeah. 
So I've been following along myself um, with Chabad, uh, daily Torah portions, and it's so interesting how I got a, a very um, an interesting revelation about names as well, because I have such a long name, and I go, gosh, Lord, what is my identity? How are you, what are you going to call me when I get to heaven, or when I see you, you know, because it's such a long name, and I go by this name here, and I go by that name here, and I go by that name here, I look really confused. <laughs> But, you know, he showed me that through, um, through the names, um, that Jacob being that wrestler, okay, and then having that face-to-face -face encounter now will be called Israel. He showed me that our names are always changing because we're always transforming into his likeness and character. So I just wanted to add to that. I'm glad to be back in Torah here, but I have been doing it on my uh, in my readings at home. And that was, it ties in with the revelation you got. So I cannot wait to see if he's going to even give me another name besides the three names I have. <laughs> so anyways, I just wanted to um, say, because my name is Bambi Noelani Brock. Bambi means child or child of God, right? It means child. But Lani means heaven. And he's been just showing me Lonnie is what your name is. And so some people say Bambi, but I'm like, no, it's Lonnie. It's Lonnie. I'm telling you, that's what God has told me. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, I'm excited so to learn more. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, we're passing out the, um, the Torah portion for this week. And uh, please study it, and we'll call on you next week to, to share a little bit of what you have learned. Our Torah portions are so important because they involve Yeshua. If you, if you do not uh, study with Yeshua, then you're, gonna get, uh, you're not going to get the impact because Yeshua is, is Torah, right? He's the Word. John um, says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So he came and he taught Torah himself taught us. So uh, please study it this week. Y you can use it as a family devotion as well so that um, your whole family can grow together. Um, okay, um, Prudence, you're still passing those out. A bit, yeah. Okay. So we're, we're also going to give you now the, we're going to pass out the Hebrew letters for this, for this week that you need to, um, to study. The Lord himself says for us to study that we may show ourselves approved of God. How many want his approval? Yeah. The approval of God is more important than approval of men. And so, this week we're studying Mem, Nun, Samek, Ayan, Pei, and Zadik. So I want you to take the, um, the card, and I want you to um, look at it, and then turn it around and see the, the letter. For example, Mem, and then you look at how Mem looks by looking at the other side. And now, if this is, this is your, your lesson for, for, this, for this week, that you may study these six sets of letters, and then next week we'll have a little quiz um, with each other to see how well you have learned those. But let us now first um, familiarize ourselves um, in, in saying the letters. Okay? Let's start. You could turn them around. And the first letter is Mem. Say Mem. Nun. Zamech. Ayin. Pe. And Zarek. Say Zarek. Okay, the T is silent there. 
So it's Zarek. Again, everyone. Mem, Nun, Zamech, Ayan, Pe, and Zarek. So please study those. Uh, today I'm going to talk about Mem so you could understand uh, not just, you know, what we just memorize a Hebrew letter. We, we need to know what it means and, and how it affects our lives. Prudence is going to pass out the, um, the Hanukkah, things to remember for Hanukkah. So raise your hand if you, do, you don't have one. Um, those of you that do not have one yet, raise your hands. And um, those of you that already have one, we passed them out yesterday. So um, we'll save the rest for those that were not here. Okay, if you were, okay, so. Everyone should have a note paper. Okay, now we know that the people of the earth built a, a um, a tower called the Tower of what? Babel, okay? So God gave them the language. Um, God gave all these people the language that people use today. So whatever language that you, you speak. Uh, okay, there's two chairs right there. Right there, yeah. Uh, I, I, is there two right here? Okay. All right, so... The language that you speak came from the Tower of Babel. The people before that spoke only one language. Now, if God wrote the Ten Commandments with his finger on the tablets of stone, I would ask, out of all the languages, what was the language that he used to write? Because he's writing a language that Moshe, Moses would understand, right? Um, so was, was it in, in Samoan, Spanish? Was it in Italian? So what language was it? Okay, so we, we, we know it's Hebrew because even in the New Testament, God spoke to Saul in Hebrew. Okay, how many more do you have? You need three more? Okay, um, I have uh, I have an extra one. All right. So We want, we want those that, uh, that pay their $20 a month, especially to get the, the, all the materials that we give out because it's expensive to print everything out, right? So if you went to, um, uh, if you went to a Hebrew college, you'd be paying like $2,000 a month. <laughs> We're charging only $20. And this is an advanced Hebrew study class where you learn a lot in an hour and a half. So, um, you know, the, uh, we, want, we want to be sure that everyone does their fair share, okay? All right, so now uh, we're all in agreement. Exodus 31, 18 says, When he had finished speaking with them upon Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written by the finger of God. So the Jewish people say it was in Hebrew, and we know, as I said, um, from the New Covenant that God spoke to Paul in Hebrew. He also frequently spoke to his people in Hebrew. And of course, we now have Hebrew archaeology, archaeological records uh, going back 3,000 years in the Hebrew language. 
So the question would be this. Um, all right. So what would be the question? There, there's, there's stairs over here. Um, well, there's one right there. And is there another one? All right. In case someone else comes. The question is, why Hebrew? Are we to assume that in heaven they speak Hebrew? So I am assuming this is not because God speaks Hebrew in heaven, uh, but it could be that all of heaven itself speaks Hebrew. Or is it because Hebrew, which is a actually a, a phonetic a phon language, was the ideal language for communicating the truth of the Tanakh. All right. The Jewish uh, sages, which are the wise men of old, uh, they contend the Hebrew was the language of God and the Torah was handed over in its entirely to Moses at Mount Sinai in the Hebrew language. Now, this may pose some problems, um, I would say with Americans in particular. Because the American language is quite foreign to the Hebrew language in many of the interpretations of words. So I wanted to just get that as a base of um, understanding uh, about the Hebrew language. And then the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Now we're, we're now in the letter M. So the letter M or Mem, excuse me, M or in Hebrew Mem has to do with water. Water in Hebrew is the word mayim, M-A-Y-I-M. Actually, uh, water symbolizing the fountain of, water signifies the fountain of wisdom. The wisdom of Torah. Similarly, I think to the physical waters of fountain, the spring, and they ascend from Wherever unknown subterranean, the water comes up and it reveals itself. Uh, and so does the fountain of wisdom express the power of flow or streaming out, flowing out from. And, and this is why the Lord said that out of our, out of, out of our what? From deep within our innermost being shall flow rivers or streams of living waters. Those living waters that are coming out, they are to be the wisdoms of God. When we speak, we are to speak in wisdom. In Hebrew terminology, this flow is from, it comes from, from God, from the kitur, K-E-T-E-R, kitur, or the crown it comes from God and comes into our innermost being. The stream is symbolized uh, in Proverbs as the flowing stream, the flowing stream, the source of wisdom comes from that flowing stream. So Mem, again, spiritual significance of this Hebrew letter is amazing. The Jewish people are taught that there are also 13 attributes of God. There, um, there's 13, there's two sets of 13 attributes, the attributes of God, God's way. But there's also the 13, I'll talk about the 13 attributes of mercy. 
And these are the ones that actually God gave to Moses in Exodus 34, 6, 4. So the attributes that we're talking about now, the attributes of mercy, um, were not just ideas that came from man. Uh, first God gave them to Moses, and then they interpret them as attributes of God. In Exodus 34, 6 says, Adonai passed before him and proclaimed, yud Hey vav Hey, yud Hey vav Hey, Yahweh, Adonai, in other words, is God. Merciful, it says. When it says merciful, meaning plenteous in mercy. Isn't that good? Don't you wish that everyone was plenteous in their mercy towards us? Especially when we fail. So mercy starts with the, the Hebrew letter M. M or Mem for what? Water. Okay, so, so mercy is con then therefore connected with, with water or something that flows. This is why it says plentiful. Mm -hmm. Meaning plenteous in mercy. It's like God's mercy is flowing like a fountain. It's just constantly there. Why? Because we err so much. And we slip all over the place. But he, he's constantly flowing with his mercy, covering us with his mercy. That's why he lived in the mercy, in the mercy seat. Isn't that wonderful? His mercy is like a stream of water and compassionate, it says also. He is compassionate and he's slow to anger. Rich in grace. Again, that means lots of mercy. He's rich in grace and he's rich in truth. See, if, if we are all of that, these are the attributes of God that we must apply to our own lives. These are not just his attributes. To be like Yah, to be like Yeshua, should be our desires. And if the Father sent him, as the Father sent me, so I send you to, to walk in these 13 attributes. Wow! How merciful is he? Amazing, huh? Verse 7 says, showing grace. That's compassion. To the, th to the thousandth generation. Wow. Continues to flow out. No matter even to, to your kids, to, to your sons, your daughters, to your grandchildren, to your great grandchildren, all the way. I mean, it keeps flowing. The, this, this grace, this compassion. It says forgiving. The word for forgiving is venache. Venache. V-E-N-A-K-E-H. Venache. Yeah, forgiving. We need to do more venache, forgiving, offenses. Even crimes and sins, yet not exonerating the guilty. The guilty, who are the guilty? The guilty are those that do not repent. You go before the, a judge, you've done something wrong. He wants to know if you are what? Repentant. So if you are repentant, he can exonerate you, right? So he will not exonerate someone that is, that is not repentant in their heart. So accordingly, the 13 attributes begin with, uh, with uh, the first, they begin with Adonai, because that's how it starts in verse 6, Adonai. And then it ends with the word Vanecha, forgives, in verse 7. So I want to break this down a little bit because it's going to help us. This is all connected with mem, with water, because all of this flows in an amazing way, like a stream of water, beginning with Adonai. Adonai what? Compassion before a person sins. So he knows if we're going to sin, so he's already compassionate about that. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, you know. So 
we too need to know this, that if your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, or anyone near you, your brother, sister, in the Lord, may sin, you already, what? Already you are compassionate. You know that she or he may slip or will slip. But you yourself already compassionate. What does that mean? That means you're going to handle that situation God's way. Right? Wow. This is the stream. This is the water. This is the flowing of God's mercy. Two, I deny compassion after a person has sinned. <coughs> He's already compassionate. And after you sin, he's compassionate again. You know what we do? We do not overlook it. We write it down. We remember. And we talk about it. And we share it with others. It, it, that's not right. <laughs> yeah. How can we expect to have a dynamic life? and a ministry, and have God flowing in through us in, in a glorious way when we act that way. Amen? <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Say, God, I thank you for Mim. Yeah, the God's of mercy. The waters of God. Hallelujah. Flowing. Thirdly, El, meaning God, he is mighty in compassion to give all creatures according to their need. So that means that maybe a whole group messed up. God will, God will be compassionate even to an entire nation. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people... It doesn't say if one of you is talking about corporately, even an entire nation. Mm -hmm. The fourth is the word, um, again, merciful, rahum, that humankind may not be distressed. Why? So this is now one of the primary reasons why he is so merciful. He doesn't want you to be distressed under pressure. Wouldn't it be wonderful that, that someone's trying to put so much pressure on you for whatever reason, but you, you just can't, you just don't go under pressure at all. It doesn't pressure you. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful, you know? They attack you from here, from there, all over the place. We're going to bring him down. We're going to bring her down, you know? And they're using every source, their face, their body language, the whole thing, the whole shebang, and it just doesn't work. Uh huh. Well, it doesn't work with God either. Because He is so compassionate and He is so merciful. And if you live to be a thousand years, this is why for a thousand generations, you would have a thousand generations. And they lived for almost a thousand years before, right? The gracious of humankind is, is concerned. He's concerned about that humankind may not be distressed. And then also there's another word uh, for gracious. Merciful is rachum, R-A-C-H-U-M. But gracious is vachanum, vechanum, v-a, v-e, excuse me, c-h-a-n-u-n, with the letter nun, which is the next letter, right? Ha for chet, which is supernatural. Ve for vav, which is pure. So, and gracious if humankind is already in distress. So if you are in distress, he wants to cover you with a blanket of his mercy to take that stress away. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to go 
to a psychiatrist. And what he'll do is he'll put you on pills. And you'll be somber and you'll be sleepy and kind of druggy, not knowing what's going on. And that will bring fear. Right? Yeah. So God says, I, I, I know human nature and I know because of the results of sin and people attacking what can happen to you. So even if you're in that condition right now, I'm about to take care of it. Slip up your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank God for these waters, this mim that comes and flows through us. And then he's slow to anger. Erech Abayim. E R E C H A P P A Y I M. Slow to anger. Verse 6. Again, he's plenteous in mercy. Plenteous is like, it's the word chesed. So it's ve rav chesed, meaning plenteous in mercy. The word ve comes from the word, va, uh, the letter vav, which means pure. Rav is another word for reverence, respect, or rabbi. So it is saying um, the rabbi, he is the great rabbi, the great teacher. He is, his intentions are pure towards you. And therefore, his mercy towards you is plenteous. That means that for you, that fountain will never stop. It's always flowing in your direction. Let's give them away praise. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So now let's go back to the scripture. He wants, remember the message last night? Yeah. We are made in his image. We're made in his likeness. And uh, life and death is in the power of the language. Tongue meaning language. So out of your innermost being, you now, because you are in his likeness, you also have a fountain that is flowing. Plenteous, merciful, hallelujah. You become a rav, a minister of righteousness, flowing out of you this fountain of mercy that is invigorating everyone around you. And when you walk by, suddenly it seems like, where did that stress go? <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. And when he was walking in the road to Imaz, there were these two, they almost said the same thing. We felt something. Hello? Yeah. So if we are, we, if we are like a living fountain flowing with this wisdom and this mercy, plenteous, I tell you, we can change climates and we can change atmospheres wherever we go. Mm -hmm. And if there is no change in the other person, it's because that person has to deal with their repentance or their changes within. But first and foremost, we want them to change. Vengeance is never ours. So this is why I don't usually talk and discuss these points and these things because they are in the hands of God. All I want to do is flow with his mercy and just be kind. In the end, God will close them up if they do not. Mm -hmm. That's number seven so far out of the, the, tw the 13 attributes of mercy. The eighth one is uh, and truth. So he is plenteous in mercy and in truth. Ve emet. Emet, E M E T. Emet. 
and truth ve The ninth one is keeping mercy unto thousands notzer notzer chaset that's with an H, Chesed, C H E S E D, Notzir, N O T Z E R, and La Alla Vim, La Alla Vim, just like it sounds, La A La Vim, with I M. Mercy unto thousands. Number ten is <clears throat> no se avon, no se, n o s e h avon, a v o n, forgiving iniquity. And then va vesha, just like it sounds, va vesha, and transgression. And va chata'a, chata'a, C H A T A, a hyphen up, A H, and sin. So forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin and pardoning, which is ve nache, ve nache, V E N A K E E. So, in particular, we are taught that these, these 13 attributes of mercy, they are like channels that flow from our innermost being. So, these are the 13 attributes of mercy. And God says, I want you to have these 13 attributes of mercy inside of you. Amen? Mm. So, these channels out of our innermost being correspond with the 13 attributes of which revealed to Moses as well as to the 13 principles of Torah that I mentioned before. They're called 13 principles of Torah, Torah exegesis, which we won't have time to get into now. These uh, other ones are like supernatural. We'll talk about that later on. The supernatural um, understanding of Torah. Why do we need the supernatural understanding of Torah just as much as we need the supernatural when we witness? After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, shall receive what? That's supernatural, so that you may be His, his voice, His witness. All right. So all of this falls in because uh, if you have the supernatural power of God, then the Holy Spirit can better teach you. Mm-hmm. When you get down to it, you know, uh, into the deeper layers, the outer garments that we wear cover what's inside, right? Our, our physical bodies. <coughs> and so when we read the Word of God, we're actually reading the outer garments of God's Word. Because we need the Ruach HaGodesh, the Holy Spirit, to teach us the what? The deep things. That means we need to pass the outer garments. Mm -hmm. The outer garments can share. The outer garments can praise. For the word says, put on the garment of praise. So you put on this garment and you, you don't have praise on the inside, <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't praise God. Right? So someone that's new, or just barely walking in the Lord, or is not even a believer, he, he can't put on this garment, because he doesn't know how to praise God. Right? Okay. So, um, I mentioned that these 13 principles of God's exegesis, uh, Torah exegesis, the ones we'll talk about l later, not, we just talked about the ones of mercy, they, they, they reveal to us and give us understanding in God's principles, God's ways. And therefore, we need the supernatural. 
there, there is the real realm of possibilities, for example, that you would try to read the book of Revelation and it's just too complicated. Right? All right. If that is a sign that that's complicated, I tell you something. The outer layer of an onion has many layers underneath. But even in the outer layer, there is a garment that covers the onion. You'll never understand the deep things of God because you'll, you'll be reading them like a book and, and it says, wow, I'm reading a whole chapter and you just couldn't understand this because it, it, it has words and they don't seem to fall in place. Yeah. And they, they, if, if you really try to get in a deeper Understand, you will not. This is why it says, I will give you teachers after my own heart. Yeah. So this is why one of the fivefold gifts in the book of, uh, of Ephesians says that he'll give you teachers. These are gifts that God gives to the body. And they... These teachers are, are, are not supposed to be just teaching you the outer layer, and, but that's what the most of them do. Because they don't know how to get... And so most of the stuff they do is just garment stuff. But they go back in their lives and they're still dealing with issues and problems. And the, they say, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. And they think that it's just talking in tongues. Wow, it's, it's far more than that. <clears throat> Each attribute of mercy is in fact a contraction of relatively infinite wisdom. Contraction meaning what? Huh? Yes. And, and, and we talked about that last week. And, and we, we shared with you that studying Torah can be like a contraction. They can be painful. Yeah. Prayer can be painful. Fasting can be painful. So we don't pray. We don't study Torah. Because it's too painful. <laughs> Yeah. We just want to stay on the garment side. Give me garment ministry. I, I, I'm looking for someone that wants more than garment ministry. <laughs> All right? Turn around and tell someone I needed this. <laughs> Again, the mem is the 13th letter of the Aleph and Bet, right? Okay, 13th letter is the 13th letter, right? So Jews are taught that 13, meaning mem, as it were, appears in the primordial air, the outer space. into which the letter Lamed soars. The letter Lamed is the tallest letter of all. So you have up to 12, which is governmental rule on this earth. So now you're reaching 13. So 13 is now soaring up here. <laughs> Why? Because 13 has to do with God's Compassion and mercy over nations down here in this governmental world that is not working at all. Otherwise, he would do another flood. You got that? But he said, I won't do a flood. So he's going to have to do something, but he won't do it because mem. Yeah. So he won't throw you away. No matter what you've ever done. 
some years ago, I, I learned this many, many years ago. And, and I've, I've had men that would say, um, uh, under great conviction, I've been lusting after your wife. I forgive them. Just like that. I become good friends with them. Because of the mercies, the mercifulness of God. Someone tell me, I've sent mercies of God. <laughs> Let's get covered with his mercy and his forgiveness. If we send, call upon his mercy. Surely goodness and mercy, not judgment. Yeah, so if you send, don't ask for God's justice. <laughs> because he'll put you on the court. <laughs> he'll take all, all the evidence against you. So ask for mercy. Because he's merciful. Justice is for the unrepentant. Make sense? Hmm. So again, let me reemphasize this point. Each attribute of mercy, those 13 things that we've learned about this morning, are a contraction of relatively infinite wisdom. So they may be painful, but I've always done this myself. When someone has hurt me, I go and buy them a big basket of fruit. Remember the one that stole $150,000 from me? I only had $100, so I gave that person a check for $100. Yeah, that... that could that be a lot of mercy? Yeah. <laughs> I always think about this. Love begets love. Mercy begets mercy. And if, if I am not an example, if you're not an example, if you're not a living menorah, if you're not a living fountain of mercy, who around you is going to be? Let it be you. Remember last night's message? It's you, it's us that will make the difference. We cannot wait for somebody else. Mm. So where, where is this then therefore, these 13 infinite wisdoms, that this contraction, it, it is it, there in our innermost being. It is like it is in the the deep recesses of our hearts and our minds uh, in the level of our subconsciousness so that we may react even subconsciously without even knowing we're giving out mercy. Now we know that sometimes people have a slip of the tongue and they say the wrong thing. <laughs> Politicians have done this too. And they get really messed up, you know. But that which is the attributes of mercy in us, they have accumulated, they have built in themselves within us. <coughs> then they're down there already in the subconscious mind, ready, and the Holy Spirit will what? Bring, huh? He'll bring those things that we have already learned. He'll bring them up because they're already there. And so if they're already there and we're walking on it, then the Holy Spirit will just bring it right up. This is what they call, the word calls, instant in season and out of season. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this world is lacking God's mercy. It's lacking wisdom. Remember, mem is water. Water is what? Wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom is knowing. So mem is water. Water is wisdom. Out of your belly will flow this wisdom. 1 Corinthians 2.10 says, For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. So the teaching of the spirit the teaching of the Spirit is to teach us the deep things of God. So the Spirit searches everything, including 
the depths of God. Wow, that's amazing, huh? So why is it that they say we're only using 5 or 10% of our brain? God, w yes, yes. When we connect to God, and it's all about the language that we're speaking. This is why I said, uh, what we teach here, the American language, uh, the Western Greek mindset language, uh, will not comprehend. So the reason why we only have this 5 to 10% is that God will not allow us to, to go beyond that. But the more profound, allowing 1 Corinthians 2.10 to, to have an effect in our lives, where the Ruach HaGodesh will actually move us into that realm of including the, the depths of God, then we increase that number exponentially. We increase it from glory to glory, from wisdom to wisdom. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, David was a man after what? So this is why he was considered such a dynamic leader. I want it to be that from here will rise up men and women after his own heart so that we can give to this world teachers after his own heart. Otherwise, you go to a Bible school, you go to any, any, any place, and you will have the outer garment agenda. What is it that you're going to teach when you go out to another church or to the foreign field? The same thing that they've been getting. And, and those countries, like our country, is in trouble. I think, I think that we got a real big plus going for us because we're living in the last days. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh and sons and daughters shall what? This is what it means to prophesy. To prophesy is, is this, and they shall speak my language. Out of their innermost being will come wisdom. So what the Western mind world Christianity has done is they've taken that scripture and they, they use it for, for, quote, prophecies that tickle the ears of people. They give the people what they want. So they'll prepare an entire ministry on, on prophecy and prophetic utterances. But let's look at this. Let's look at the track record. What has it accomplished? The prophets themselves are falling. And the people that got these prophetic words are nowhere in God's kingdom except that they're trying to copy what other prophets are doing. And they're going around circles. Do you have a word for me? Do I have a word for you? <laughs> yeah. It's like there's a, there's a, a conspiracy between um, the angels of light and so his ministers also convert themselves into an angel of light. And so there's a conspiracy among Hasatan and his angels of light. Conspiring to, to say God did not say. Twisting the word around. Making that which is right wrong and that which is wrong seeming to be right. In fact, that's what the word of God says. Satan converts truth into a lie. Okay, so why don't we have more teachers, uh, pastors, 
and others attending these classes because it's two P A I N too, too painful. They will experience contractions. <laughs> and yet, what was it that Paul said? He says, I travail. He has contractions. I contrail, I, I travail people into the kingdom. And I don't stop in that travailing. He says, I travail them into maturity. So in a sense, I have my contractions up here. I'm travailing to, to birth something here. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what is this whole thing about this innermost being? This deep place. It's this... This belly is the womb then, where things are birthed. And this baby needs to be birthed. Hello? Stir what? That which is already there and give it birth. And it's going to take some contractions. It's going to take some travailing. It's going to take, in my part, uh, extraordinary studying and prayer and determination to believe that you can do this and still be merciful when you don't study <laughs> the weekly Torah. <laughs> you got it? But that's not going to give you a cup out because of this overwhelming mercy. Hello? I think we should pause and take a moment to give him praise. Hallelujah. Father, let these things sink into the recesses of our heart. That we may know, hallelujah, what is the will and the purpose of, for our lives at this time, in this hour. Hallelujah. Amen. So our conscious, our conscious wisdom, so we have a, a, a conscious wisdom. If we didn't have a conscious wisdom, it, it would be um, a busy downtown four-way street with no lights. But our conscious wisdom, the wisdom that we draw from, okay, draws its points of insight primarily from the attributes of mercy that we're talking about. So we already have those in place, but perhaps in small doses. Not large enough doses to make a difference. But we are drawing from, from them. Especially if you have known God. God says in his word, and, and he shall plant it, he shall plant it in, in their hearts. So people that don't have someone to share Torah, God is merciful enough that by the Holy Spirit will, will influence their hearts to know at least the basic truths of these 13 attributes of mercy. Okay, so Mem, again, is spiritual waters, the source of what? Wisdom. Okay, so in, um, in Hebrew, A-T hyphen bash, B-A-S-H. Ad bash. This word ad bash means that in, in Hebrew um, practice, um, sometimes when, when you really understand deep Hebrew, it's like... Um, a young person that's in a spelling what? 
cunt spelling bee thing. They're so good at spelling, you know, that they could almost spell backwards. They could look at the letter backwards and they know exactly what it is. When you get deeper in God's Torah, you can almost do the same thing. It's for example, you can take Aleph and Tav and switch them, okay, and come up with an answer that is necessary. And so this word atbash is actually, uh, does the, the Hebrew letters at times are reversed. As I said, for example, tav is moved up to the place of aleph, and aleph takes the place of tav. <clears throat> Mem, water, wisdom. Mem, because it is wisdom, can transfer itself to yud. The smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet that looks like a drop of water. That's yud, right? It's like a dot. Remember the message last night? What was it about the dot last night? The atom. The atom. The atom, you cannot see it with natural eyes. But there are particles that go around it, and they go around really fast, and scientists have been able to actually, through, through the right kind of micro, micro, uh, microscopes, look into and actually see the movement of that atom. And that atom is vibrating, it is moving, you know. It's there. The interesting thing of these, this scientific find is that that when the scientists looked through the microphones and looked at it, that atom, the atom responded back to the eyeball of the, of the person that was watching it. It had a certain kind of movement. And when another scientist would come, it would react differently. This is why the Lord says, only believe. Because when you believe, the reactions are going to be different. All right? So let's say that there's a Christian science that, scientist that looked at it. Then the atom, the nucleus, would react a certain way. Yielding, perhaps ready to obey. So when Yeshua spoke to the fig tree that is made out of atoms, the fig tree obeyed. And God said, if you say unto this mountain, be thou removed, it will what? Obey. obey. And it's made out of atoms. And that was discovered even by scientists that truly atoms do respond. So, here is the, the mem transfers to you. The smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet looks like a drop of water. Yud or yod, y-o-d, y-yud, y-u-d, y-o-d, or y-a-d. And y-a-d is the word for what? In Hebrew, you know when we read the Torah, we cannot touch it, but we use a what? A long stick with a with a hand in the end. Yeah. So it's so that you don't touch it and stain it. Too many people, the oil stains the Torah a scroll, right? So so it, it, it goes like this. It's a stick, but it has a hand in the end with the finger pointing at the letters that you want to read. So the the word for hand is the letter. Yad. It's a Yad. Okay? So now we see that, that Mem transforms itself to Yad. Okay? <laughs> the smallest level in Hebrew alphabet. And Yad, Yod, or Yud is God. Mm -hmm. or the hand of God. <laughs> the
the hand of God had something to do with this, right? <laughs> yes, the hand of God. That's that. That's the yad, the hand of God. Mm -hmm. So what happened in Nebuchadnezzar's feast? They saw what? The writing of the wall, the hand of God, the finger of God, like this, pointing, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. That was the yad came out and manifested itself in the natural. And so God wrote the Ten Commandments with the what? The Yad, the finger of God in Hebrew. It, and so then it is the point. The hand is the point of wisdom or the point of revealed insight because the hand is pointing to the Torah which is giving the person what? Revealed insight. So the drop of water emerging from, where does it emerge from? The, the fountains of Mim. So where did the, this is what they interchanged, right? The Mim turned into a, a, a Yad. And so the drop of water emerges from the fountain of Mim. First King 18.44 says, Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud. It looks like the cloud in the distance, but no, wait, wait a minute. It's a small, as small as a hand that is rising out of the water. The hand is rising out of the water. So wh where was the hand? In the water. In the mem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And guess what he says? That you and I are his extended hand. But first you must emerge yourself in what? In the waters. Mm. What time? How much time do I have left? Five minutes? Uh, how much time do I have? Oh, do you want five or ten more minutes? <laughs> okay, not more than ten, okay? I want to, well, I'll, I'll just give you a little bit more and then we'll close, we'll continue next week. So the words for... Um, for one in Hebrew is called what? The word is called echad. Say echad. Okay. So the word for one, for God, echad. And the, and the word for achava, achava means what? Love. Okay. So the word one, for God is one, echad, and love, achava, for God is love, both equal to the number 13. Mm-hmm. And that's the sacred letter we're talking about today, the letter Mem. So how do you get this Mem? You have to combine God's love and Him being one. The Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. Shema Israel Adonai Elohenu Adonai Echad. The Lord is one, but the Lord is also a chav. And when you combine the one and the twelve for love, you have thirteen. The secret of the letter Mim is that God is so loving that He, His love, He's covered us with a blanket of love and covers a multitude of sins. That's why we must be so forgiving. Bless those that curse you and say all manner of evil. Mm -hmm. If you do not forgive them, then the Father will not forgive you because 
If you don't forgive them, you are an unrepented person yourself. You're just as bad as the other person. So I, I want you to take a look there um, at, uh, I think it's Samech. Samech. You have two letters for Samech. Yeah. Uh, what letter, uh, what, which one of those two letters of Samech looks like a mem? On the right. Mm -hmm. So you have um, Samech because it has the mech, which is water. And you have a closed Samech and you have an open Samech. Why would one of the Samics be open and one is closed? Well, it is because the Samic close is the womb in you. Yes, that place where, where, where today a lot of birthing took place, right? God's word came in you so that you could begin to give birth. And, and when you're ready, guess what's going to happen? You switch from the Close to the open. So that's another huge, amazing lesson that you're going to learn on Samech. Right? Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So the closed final mem, okay, so there's the mem, there's the closed final mem, is the source of the fountain of wisdom connected and included within its subterranean subconscious is included with the, the closed one, that subterranean subconscious, that womb deep within our soul. It corresponds to the secret of, of one. Out of your deep this innermost being shall flow rivers of what? Living waters. And because God is love, now remember, one and Ahava, 13. So God being one and his love brings about the mim, the oneness. Okay, I think that's as far as we will go. Mm-hmm. <laughs>